Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time! Today's movie recap will be a drama and crime movie from 2019 called Adopt a Highway. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The story is about Russell Millings, a man who spent 20 years in prison. He was imprisoned under California's three strikes law after being caught with herbs. One day, a prison guard tells him he's being released. Excited, Russell packs his belongings, including a newspaper clipping from his cell. He changes into new clothes and completes some paperwork before leaving. After his release, Russell finds a job at a diner and a place to live in a local motel. Having been in prison for so long, he is unfamiliar with modern technology like emails, smartphones, and the internet. In the evenings, he enjoys simple meals and watches TV in his room. The next day, Russell visits an officer who explains that his parole will end in a few months. He will need to send reports via email, meaning he won't be closely monitored anymore. Russell is confused about the email part, but the officer says he has to figure it out. Russell goes to an empty internet cafe where a young man helps him with basic computer tasks. The young man takes a picture with Russell, saying it's rare to meet someone like him. With his help, Russell finds an article about his father's death from a heart attack in 2001. Russell gets so absorbed in the search that he shows up late to work and is reprimanded by his supervisor. After finishing work, Russell decides to visit an amusement park to relive some youthful moments and enjoy playing fun games. However, his joy is short-lived since he has to return to work the next day. Later, Russell returns to the internet cafe. When he arrives, the store clerk makes fun of him for not having a phone or an email address. He jokingly asks if Russell was in prison, and Russell confirms it. The kid's attitude changes completely when he learns Russell spent 20 years in prison for holding just one ounce of drugs. Surprised, the kid offers to help Russell create an email account. During his night shift at the diner, Russell agrees to close the place and receives the key from his supervisor, who leaves right away. Russell continues to clean the diner and steps outside to dispose of the trash. To his surprise, he hears the sound of a crying baby nearby. Following the sound, he discovers the noise is coming from a dumpster. Astonished, he finds a baby girl abandoned there. Russell rescues the baby and brings her into the diner. A note attached to her reveals her name is Ella. Russell thinks of calling an emergency number but realizes the diner's office is already closed. With no other option, he decides to take Ella to his place. As he puts Ella on his bed, she begins crying. Russell struggles but eventually finds a way to entertain her and she falls asleep. He calls 911 to report Ella but changes his mind when someone answers. Shortly after, some police officers come to his place to investigate the call. They hear a crying baby in the background but assume Russell is the father. One officer kindly advises him to give the baby a tummy massage to stop the crying. The next day, Ella keeps crying and Russell feeds her some milk cream. Soon after, he goes to a nearby store to get supplies for Ella. Russell has a hard time finding what he needs so an employee helps him find infant milk. When the employee asks if his wife breastfeeds the baby, Russell says no and leaves quickly. Running home to see Ella, Russell accidentally drops most of the groceries he bought. Fortunately, he finds Ella sleeping soundly. After learning how to use search engines online, Russell goes to the internet cafe to research if it's legal to keep a found baby. He quickly discovers that one should inform the authorities immediately upon finding a baby. Keeping the baby could lead to accusations of kidnapping. Despite this, it seems Russell decides to keep Ella. After bathing her, he gets an idea and takes her to the beach. They spend the whole day by the ocean, enjoying the view and walking on the wet sand. Later that day, when they return home, Russell is careless and Ella falls from the bed, slightly injuring herself. Russell becomes upset and apologizes to her. The next day, Russell takes Ella to the hospital and decides to tell the truth. He informs a hospital employee that he found Ella in a dumpster. The employee promptly reports the situation to the police and child welfare. Soon, the authorities arrive and ask Russell a series of questions. Unfortunately, he has to give Ella up and she will be taken to foster care. Despite the short time they spent together, it's clear that Russell grew attached to Ella. He answers all their questions honestly and shares everything he remembers. One of the officers sympathizes with him and gives him her card in case he recalls any additional information. The next day, Russell goes to work as if everything is fine. Suddenly, while he's busy with his tasks, a pair of officers and his supervisor approach him. They ask him to step outside to talk. The officers request to see the dumpster where he found the baby. He tells them everything but lies about the timing of the discovery. The officers, having already spoken to the diner's manager, know that Russell didn't work the previous days and question his story. They mention his ongoing parole and suggest he is a suspect of kidnapping the baby girl. 
After the officers leave, his supervisor fires him and asks for the diner keys back. Feeling overwhelmed, Russell packs his belongings at the motel and heads to a bus station. He buys a ticket to return to his hometown of Casper, Wyoming. On the way, he becomes lost in thought and shows signs of missing Ella. He fondly remembers her after seeing a card she had bitten. At a bus stop, he meets a girl who is upset because she thinks she lost her ticket. Sympathizing, Russell gives her a napkin to wipe her tears. Later, the bus stops again and Russell goes to a store to get some food. Since he doesn't have enough money to buy everything he wants, he puts a bag of chips back. When he gets back on the bus, the girl from earlier approaches him with the bag of chips to thank him. Unexpectedly, he chokes on his bread and the girl helps him. After the incident, they form a bond. Russell offers her a mustard mayo sandwich, which she enjoys. They share their food and have a good time getting to know each other. The girl named Diane does most of the talking while Russell listens and acts awkwardly. Even though he doesn't say much, Diane seems to like him. When they reach Denver, Diane gets off the bus and gives him her brother's cafe address, inviting him to visit. They shake hands and Russell continues his journey. He eventually arrives in Casper and sleeps by the cemetery gate at night. The next morning, Russell visits his parents' graves. He sits with them and expresses deep gratitude, saying he misses them. Russell removes some leaves from the graves and promises to turn his life around. He lies down next to his late parents and rests for a while, recalling happy memories. Shortly after, Russell goes to the bank where his father used to have an account. He tells the employee there's a deposit box that belongs to him. When asked to show the keys, Russell reveals them around his neck. However, the employee thinks he's a homeless person who found the key. The employee tells his manager, who then talks to Russell. After checking his ID, the manager apologizes for the misunderstanding and reveals that his father was a very valued customer. Shortly after, an employee takes Russell to a secure area and gives him some privacy. Alone, Russell unlocks the deposit box. At first it seems empty, but he eventually finds a heartfelt letter from his dad. In the letter, his father expresses his love and apologizes for the rough times Russell faced. He mentions a valuable stamp collection he gathered throughout his life, which was his major hobby. This news brings great joy to Russell, who remembers the stamps from his childhood. Finally, his dad asks him to take care of himself and gives instructions on how to open a nearby storage unit. Russell wastes no time and goes straight to the storage unit. There, he finds a neatly organized stamp collection, filling him with joy and bringing tears to his eyes. A few months later, Russell visits the Department of Family and Child Services to see the woman responsible for finding Ella a foster home. He wants to meet Ella, but the woman informs him that he can't do it at the moment. He also expresses his desire to adopt Ella, but his request is immediately denied. Despite this, Russell doesn't give up. He hands an envelope to the officer, asking her to give it to Ella on her 18th birthday. When asked why it needs to be her 18th birthday, Russell explains that it's the way the trust was set up, ensuring Ella receives the assets when she is ready to handle them as an adult. This shows his willingness to embrace her as family, completely surprising the officer. The movie ends with Russell heading to a bus stop, using a compass to decide his next adventure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.